Just like the White House wants to ignore Biden's bad polling, major donors are ignoring the massive support Trump has among Republican voters. Americans for Prosperity Action, a political network founded by the Koch brothers, is throwing its support behind Nikki Haley, claiming she represents a new generation of leadership. Last time we checked, she's a whopping 50 points behind her former boss in the polls. If that's not clear enough about where the base is, how about listening to the crowd in Haley's home state of South Carolina when Trump made an appearance? Here to react is former Assistant Treasury Secretary and host of the Monica Crowley podcast, Monica Crowley and National Review Editor-in-Chief Rich Lowry. Both of you, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, so, Rich, I'll come to you first. It's remarkable that the donor class is willing to throw, like, burn their, as Dagan will say, burn their cash mm -hmm. on Nikki Haley, who I would argue doesn't have a chance of beating Donald Trump. Yeah, so the non-Trump candidates are very likely just, we're talking about deck chairs, shuffling them around here. But sometimes New Hampshire and Iowa can break late, and they're looking for a Hail Mary. Is anyone, in, any voter going to pay attention to this endorsement? No. But they do have some resources that will be helpful to Haley. They do have some field workers that will be helpful to Haley. But look, you know, all you need to show, you don't need to show the poll numbers, you need to show the reaction to that Clemson game. That's not a normal politician getting that kind of reaction <laughs> no. from sports fans. So it just goes to he's a political and cultural phenomenon. How do you run against that? But Because I have talked about this with Kellyanne Conway. It is the yawning chasm between the elitism of the donor class and what voters see and feel and want in a candidate. Yes. And you can't bridge it. The founder of Interactive Brokers, Petterfee, yes. said, Glenn Youngkin, I will f forever repeat this. Oh, he can beat anybody. He's so smart. He can beat Trump. Never. The establishment and donor class has a deep-seated animosity toward Donald Trump. They don't like his style. They don't like his uh, success before politics. They also don't like the fact that they can't control him as well. So all of this comes out in various ways, and they've all been looking for a real alternative to Trump. What the Kochs just did here is a huge blow to Governor Ron DeSantis, who was the obvious kind of default alternative to Trump, but he's essentially flamed out. So they've been in search of someone else. The problem here is they're all running for a very distant second place to Trump. And when you talk about that Clemson game, you talk about the forgotten men and women across this country. This is one of the huge reasons why Donald Trump won in the first place in 2016, because he spoke directly to them. And he said, I am not owned by either party. I am here to represent and serve you, the forgotten men and women. That created an organic, deep-seated, and very powerful emotional bond with the voters. Not political, not intellectual, emotional. And that emotional bond is impossible to break. It's not just Koch's money. They have a whole donor network. That money could be used for really good purposes. If they're going to burn it on Nikki Haley, I think is disgraceful. But let's go to this, because uh, turning to Disney, uh, Disney has slowly but surely been losing its magic, no doubt. Park prices are making family vacations unattainable. It's uh, seen flop after flop at the box office. Its latest SEC filing suggested its embrace of liberal politics and social movements has hurt the brand. But none of that can rain on CEO Bob Iger's parade. Today at a town hall, he said, quote, we have real reason as Disney to be optimistic, and it starts with the fact that we're Disney. Rich, <laughs> listen, Disney can be great today, but if, if they keep abusing their customers and kids and parents, they will not be Disney of the 80s tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's a negative brand for a lot of people now. You just assume, not knowing anything about the movie, no, I'm not going to take the kids there. I'll, right. I'll take them to see Super Mario Brothers or whatever else. And this is, it's a tragedy. I mean, this is a great American brand. He's not wrong, but they've uh, thrown, uh, you know, run it into the ground with, based on these woke politics and catering to their idiotic employees. I, but I think that part of this is He's in charge, and they are making content that a sewage lagoon doesn't even deserve. And he's trying to blame it on the politics of the people who work there when it's really on him. 
Well, they brought him back to try to salvage the company because his successor just was not clearly not up to the job. And Iger himself has said, I should have vetted the successor. I thought he'd be better in this position. So they brought him back. And it's just been one rough patch after another. But keep in mind, Bob Iger, I've met him a couple of times. Very nice man, brilliant guy. But he is a Democrat. You know, he is a leftist at his core. So the vast majority of these CEOs who believe this actually don't see the problem. Like when they're when they're producing this kind of content and they're running it past the CEO in the final cut of a movie or a TV show or whatever, they literally don't see the problem because they believe in all the woke nonsense. Now, when it starts to affect the bottom line, the theme parks, the lines for the movies, all diminishing big time, the shareholders are upset, the public is upset. I think when it starts to affect the money issue for these uh, companies, that's when it really starts to get their attention. So you might start to see some backpedaling on this. In fact, their Snow White movie, they junked it yeah. completely with the woke Snow White and audiences were having none of it. They decided to junk it at huge cost. I think maybe now we've reached peak woke, at least I hope, and some of these big companies but are going the to one thing, around. No, you, well, you make an inter interesting point that, you know, Bob Iger's a Democrat, right? But I would think of Bob Iger as the 1970s, 1980s, a Bill Clinton-esque Democrat, which is nothing like this woke, crazy leftism that you see today. And you would think that would bring a little common sense but in, part of the, into part of the, the problem, business. though, is like guys like that can't stand being criticized by people to their left, right? They don't like being that called a be. racist. They don't like being called the man. And that's why very often they just cave to these uh, idiotic kids who've learned all this stuff in school and then jumped over the, the college campus walls and make, try to make the rest of our society like Oberlin College. Right. Just, 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 and, God help us. <laughs> and guess what? Walt Disney World is a waste of your money, and it's a nightmare. I don't love it. go. I <laughs> love it. But I don't spend my money there. Thank you, guys. Tomorrow